Uh, have you always lived in Cobb County? I have not. Where have you lived prior to this? I ha- I am from the Midwest, so I've lived in Indiana and Illinois and a little bit in Missouri. For a long time for each of those? Yes. Well, I mean, I lived in Indiana until I was probably 22 years old and then lived in Illinois until I was probably 45 years old. Um and Missouri was a part-time kind of stop in between there, but we lived on the, what would be considered the metro east of St. Louis. So we were in the, in the Illinois side of St. Louis, but we worked in St. Louis kind of thing. So that would have been kind of Missouri connection there. Okay. So then we've lived here in Cobb County for maybe six years. Gotcha. Um, was it your whole family who lived in all of those places, or was it you and just one of those? Uh, my whole family would have been the Indiana connection, my you know, born and raised family in college would have been there. And then my immediate family, husband, children from Illinois to here. Okay, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. So how did you and your family end up in Cobb County then? Like what made you want to move here and stuff? Um, my husband's job. He had been working for a company for, let's say, 10, 12 years at the time. And they are based out of Atlanta, so we had to move here. Gotcha. So it wasn't really like, oh, I love this place. I would like to not go particularly, move here. but um, because our friends and family were all in Illinois, but we were ready for a new adventure and a little bit more diverse area and things like that that Cobb County had more of than where we were at. So we were interested in coming here, and the opportunity came about. So gotcha. Yeah, presented kind of itself. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Have you liked living here so far? We love living here. Do we you love like living it here. In yes. comparison to the other places? Um, the pace is a little faster here, but I feel like living in Kennesaw or living like in Cobb County, we sort of have the best of both worlds because I feel like it is a small town feel because it is you're in your own little micro communities and areas where you've got your own little zone that you function in, but yet you're a part of a much bigger area much bigger society and like I said it's much more diverse here than it was in Illinois so I think that's good I think that's good for our kids that's good for the you know the neighborhoods we live in all of that gotcha so that's been a good experience and there's just more there's just more here more of everything so in what terms um more opportunity for jobs more uh social opportunity more restaurants stores different things like that if you you may have only had one or two grocery stores to choose from or one or two doctors to choose from that were specialized in dermatology or something like that whereas Mm -hmm. here there are vast numbers of people that you can go to so it's it's just they're just more here to offer our family so Mm -hmm. you said you'd moved here around six years ago Mm -hmm. was that in a particular month do you remember i believe it was january Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. That's that's really interesting that you moved, like, all the way down. So mm-hmm. it was basically along the East Coast? Well, we were mid, you know, total oh, Midwesterners, Midwest, yeah. yeah, and then moving here. But like I said, the reason we moved here was specifically because my husband's company was based out of here. But also looking forward, like, I had worked for a company, for example, who, I worked for a retailer, and all their buying offices and everything were based out of St. Louis, and so that was a good spot at the time. That's actually, both we both worked for that retailer for oh, okay. many years, and, um... Over time, a lot of the headquartered things, like that company, for example, and several others were leaving the St. Louis area and mm-hmm. going to other cities. So the opportunities there for corporate jobs, which is what my husband was doing or wanting to do, um, that those opportunities were dwindling kind of in that area. So we knew if we wanted to continue on going upward in our careers, or for him specifically, because at that time I was a stay-at-home parent anyway, um, that we needed to move somewhere better suited for that. And so this area is better for that and has been better for his job. Gotcha. But, you know, what he does in his job now, which is for the same company still, mm-hmm. is um, he's he would have had to come here to grow to that corporate level. Gotcha. Are you so. still in retail? Are you doing that still? I am. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Could you tell me about the kind of home that you live in a little bit? Just describe it for me. A <laughs> uh, single-family home two-story with a finished basement um it has 
five bedrooms and five baths. Gotcha. And uh, the type of ownership, do you own this house? Well, we uh, we are homeowners, but of course we have a mortgage, so we are paying into our mortgage monthly, as most people are. Okay. Yeah. But like you own it, you don't like rent yes, the house. Yes, correct. Yes, okay. we own it. We are owners. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. So now we're going to move on to the more... Um, solar-based questions Mm -hmm. so we're going to talk about um in your own words like why you did or obviously as far as i can tell did not adopt solar power for your house was it a conscious decision it was not a conscious decision um had it been a part of what this era of house like let's say this house is maybe 14 15 years old i think um had it been a part of what was already in this house, that would have been a, a bonus probably, but um, it wouldn't have been something that in, impacted my decision. Do I want to go look at this house or would this be a house I'd consider if it did or did not have solar power? Gotcha. So if it had it on, you would still be interested in getting the house? Yes. Yeah. If it had it on and it, it was a proven, uh, you know, success, then I wouldn't know why you wouldn't be interested in having that. Gotcha. So when you did move into this house, did you make a decision either like by yourself or like a joint decision with your spouse, like whether or not you wanted to have solar? It was not a discussion really because this house didn't have that and it wasn't part of what we had in our, what we were looking for specifically. It probably, it would have been a bonus if it was a house we came upon and all the other things were in line. And then that was also additional. That probably would have been something that if you could go back and say, here's the history that shows what your electric bills or what your different, you know, here's, here's where it shows that it's, it's proven to be a, an advantage for this house. That would have been a, a plus on something, but it wasn't on our radar of things that we wanted. We were looking for a particular amount of space, number of bedrooms, you know, that sort of thing over solar. That really wasn't part of the discussion. Gotcha. So you would have liked it if it did have it? Like you would if it been... were proven to be something that was positive for the house, yes, okay. it would have been something we would be interested in. Well, we previously built a house in, in Illinois, and that wasn't, had our builder been particularly knowledgeable about solar and would have brought it up and had some kind of positive type, you know, feedback from other customers about it, we might have been interested in putting it in and we would have had a choice at that time. But again, it wasn't really necessarily on our radar to do it. Gotcha. So, since you've lived in so many various places, uh, did you ever consider or have solar in the previous places that you lived? No, I did not. Um, my experience kind of with the solar is there was a time frame in like the 80s when it kind of became popular because people were starting to be sort of semi-concerned about the environment and they were building houses that had solar power. And it was kind of a trendy thing back then to do. And then there was kind of problematic because it would work for a while and then it would be, the panels would be leaking or there really wasn't, the technology kind of like went on and the the people that had solar power in their homes would have to continue to keep updating those. So the cost to do it probably did not um, preclude a lot of people from wanting to do it, I guess, because not a lot of people were having a a lot of success with it back then because they were probably just taking their first stabs at how to get it into someone's home. So it was kind of a, it was sort of a trendy 80s and 90s thing, in my opinion, like that, that's what I know of it is people whose houses were built around that time and they were kind of environmentally conscious were putting those in. But I don't think that they were sophisticated enough really to garner the type of results that they wanted to make it worth doing. So it's not been anything that I ever sought out or that I ever personally had in my home. Gotcha. And that's actually a great segue to one of the other questions, which is, um, what do you think, like, in your opinion, some of the non-economic barriers are that people would have in mind when they um, would think about installing solar for their rooftops? Non-economic? Yes. So, like, you mentioned Um, the leaky roofs and stuff like that. Well, yeah, I'm sure that people are probably leery of doing something that's outside the box of, of normal building because they're taking on something that could have potential problems because it's not as tried and true as flipping on a light switch you know connected to the electric company so so you might have you would want to know that there's an assurance that it's going to work and that it's not going to cause additional issues for you and that if you did have issues that there are people that could service it and people that you know that as time goes on do you need to update those or 
what happens 10 years from now when you install them today? Is it going to be a hassle to kind of keep up with the um, changing technology on it or that sort of thing? Is it going to end up causing you any problems? But in non-economic, I guess if you had a social conscious that you had a particular concern about the environment or about, uh, you know, about uh, not being reliant on other forms of energy or something like that, it might affect your opinion on how you operate your household. That's true. Mm -hmm. Do you think that um, the opposite of that, a barrier to people having solar power would be that they aren't environmentally conscious or like they don't have that kind of social like... um... Probably. Okay. Probably either they're not educated on it which most people probably are not particularly, or they're not interested in, you know, in particularly in um, the environmental impact, uh, or they don't have the finances to change their current situation. So they wouldn't be, you know, unless they moved into a house that already had that, they might not be, that, that might not be on their radar. They might just be making their payments and not have, you know, the finances to do something extra for whatever Gotcha. Even in a, even if even if the long run you save money doing it, some people don't have that front money to put up to change their household over to something like that. Mm-hmm. So specifically in Cobb, do you think um, people who have thought about solar, do you think that there are other economic or sorry non economic uh, barriers that they would perceive uh, in order to prevent themselves saying, "Oh, I don't want solar power because of this." That isn't an economic factor. I guess I'm 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 kind of like sheltered in the in the thought about like our neighborhood for example and what what is your what is the appearance of your house look like if you have solar power do you need a certain amount of land for that is is it on your is it a unit on your house or what you know what does it look like how does it impact the look of your property and that kind of thing I guess they might mm-hmm. be wondering what how it would impact their curb appeal I don't know cuz I don't really know what a unit or a you know what it would look like to have that in your home do you think um, our neighborhood specifically, do they have standards that they would say, oh, I don't want you to have solar because it wouldn't make the neighborhood look uniform or something like that? Do you think the association here I would... mean, I think that could be an issue, but I don't, again, I don't know what a standard like unit would look like. Is it is it something that is mounted to your roof? Is it something that you have to have a grid somewhere in your backyard? It just, it, the sort of depends because even here, if you wanted to have a non-standard mailbox that's not acceptable because if one person has a non-standard mailbox the next person has a cow mailbox and the next one has a fish mailbox and (laughs) same thing if you said you wanted to have a solar power thing and it's on you know it's it's on the back corner of your roof that's one thing but then if you have grids all across your front yard that's another thing you know so you have to have one standard answer that's probably appropriate for everybody to you know it's either you can do it or you can't or you can do it within these parameters only so um you know, some people may be concerned about that, I guess. Gotcha. If I said it was just rooftop solar power, would that change your answer or perception on that question? <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't bother me personally if someone had a rooftop. But yes, I think if it was a unit that blended in with the aesthetic of your house, that people would be more interested in it. Okay. Do you think that's like the main uh, non-economic barrier that they would have to not adopt? Um, I think people want convenience. They don't want to have to have anything that could potentially have any issues with it so it it would have to be something that's very easy um, that's proven to work and that is easy to maintain because people don't want to mess with stuff you know even to get the impact that you're you know that you could potentially get the gain you could get from it has to be easy to get it has to be um, not even necessarily reasonably priced in in this area that we're in because I think if people really cared about it they would pay for it if it had some you know future payoff for them whether that's finances or whether it's you know, whatever they feel socially that they want to do about the environment. Gotcha. So now we're going to um, pinpoint the question a little more. And uh, pretty much the same question, if you had the option, would you put rooftop solar on your home? And why or why not would you want that? If I knew more about it, and I felt like it would, for me, it would probably be, I'm not as personally committed to the savings of the energy and all that as much as I would be about my own personal um, electric bill going down or something like that. I mean, that's just an honest answer is that I'm not an environmentalist particularly. Um, So for me, it would be knowing for certain that the cost that I put into it in the long run would benefit me 
A, for me personally to benefit the time frame that I'm living in this house because of the energy savings and all the things, all, understanding all the benefits of it and the cost of it, and also then looking forward to if I were to sell this house in 10 years or 20 years, would that technology that I'm putting on today benefit me if I were to go to sell it? Would it, would it be more attractive to people? Is that what people are looking for? So I'd always be looking at it. Does this improvement equate to what I want it to, or would it just be me putting money in for that? Gotcha. So in terms of just your own personal self, if there wasn't an economic barrier, what would some of the non-economic barriers be for you personally to adopt? Non-economic, again, I'd want it to be I don't want to say foolproof, but I want it to be um, to known to perform and me not have to have someone here maintaining it, known to not be problematic. And that would be, I guess, important. I mean, because the rest of it's kind of tied to the financial part of it, really, for me. Um, so with the maps, it allows us to talk more about rooftop solar in general for like more of like people who live all over the place. So are you talking mostly about like um, like. For homes, or are you talking about businesses and... We're talking about rooftop solar for people's homes okay, generally. So, so like, people homes. who either own or rent homes, just, like, people who have homes, like, would they put solar on their homes okay. or not? Because, I mean, there's some places, like, when, uh, like, on our drive home to Indiana, for example, mm -hmm. we go by a lot of solar farms, wind farms, things like that, where... Because there's just tons of flat land out there and it's not highly populated, those are areas where you're going to see more things like that as far as feeding into, you know, not not feeding into residential, in other words. I don't know where they feed into or how they harness the power or whatever, but you do see that, like, in those kind of areas. But I would think, like, for personal... Um, you can market yourself. This, this would be where we think, like, I'm putting where I You're think... You're putting I'm, uh, where you think the people have the most rooftop solar energy on their homes. You okay. can mark however much you want. You can label words... Uh, according to our labels that relate to how you feel uh, those people might think. I'm going to say these people are probably um, echo conscious here in California because they are, they're just known to be more further along in their thinking, like on recycling and all that kind of thing. And there are probably a lot more uh, homes that run on solar power and things here would be my guess. I'm just totally guessing mm -hmm. that based on stereotypical thought of like a California person. And I would think just know, like knowing the weather kind of going up through here, like Florida, Texas, kind of down through here that you would have more of an opportunity for solar power to be more successful than you would other areas. So like the Southern coast, basically mm -hmm. a lot of the Southern coast. And then I'm trying to think where people, you might have some, like if I look at Again, being from the Midwest, I don't see as much in in the in the towns that I know of. There's not as much growth and new homes being built and very much social conscious there for the environment than as there is maybe here. And I don't know why that is, but that I don't know. That's why I think it would be kind of more concentrated in this coast area. Gotcha. Okay, so now that you've marked that, do you want to put any labels on, like, what you think of those people or anything? Um, I think these people have a lot of sun. Yeah. <laughs> In Florida, the sunny state. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Environment's the focus here for a lot of people to live kind of on the coast there. I think, like, some of these states are a little more progressive than some of the other ones. So mm -hmm. maybe they're and they're a little bit more into cutting technology. Based on what you marked, what mm -hmm. makes um, each of those communities diff so different from our community that we live in? Or the people from those communities? Um, kind of going back over here to, like, California. I think mm -hmm. that people there inherently are more... Uh, environmentally conscious of things that they're doing and and uh, about being doing things that are sustainable and um, that's just more a part of that culture there I think um, it's kind of more ingrained in in everybody from students all the way to you know that's just a something that is more I I, I perceive to be more popular there so I think people would probably automatically have already been thinking about things like renewable energy there when they're going to build or when they're going to look for a house where that's not been like a focus or one of the main things you check off on your list either either place that I've lived either the midwest or here but I also haven't sought that out okay was there a reason 
uh, further reason that you chose uh, Texas and Florida and all that, like the people, like was there a reason in terms of are those people really different from the people where we live? Um, I don't, people-wise, no, not necessarily. I think I was just really thinking of where it would be, you know, would you have better luck in Seattle running off of the sun or in Florida? So I was just going with where I thought of sunny state would be gotcha. <laughs> and warm which doesn't really make sense because everybody has sunshine whether it's warm there or not but that's just what I'm, my initial thought <laughs> gotcha so you just pretty much chose that solar would be there because it makes sense for it to be there because of the weather and mm-hmm. stuff yes okay. the weather and yeah so uh do you think other things would maybe play into why people would adopt more solar there say political issues or policy making and things like that Could be, could be. Probably, I'm guessing that more democratic thinking states may necessarily, they they may be more keyed into those types of programs, maybe, than what others are. Traditionally Republican kind of thinking. I don't know. I hadn't really thought about it until just now. But yeah, that that probably has to do with with, uh, some of it. Okay. What kind of, like, factor do you think would affect adoption the most, I guess, like, within the states that you uh, marked? Uh, It could be that if if states um, have some sort of a program where you get some sort of benefit for participating in something like that, let's say you get some kind of a tax break or something for Mm -hmm. adopting that type of um, situation in, in your home, and people would be more inclined to look into it. Gotcha. And if there was more information or education on it that was of interest to people, because there's a lot of information on everything out there, so you have to you have to catch people's interest about how it would benefit them. Mm-hmm. So they might be more likely to adopt if there's some sort of financial um, benefit to it. Gotcha. Do you think... Um people's relationship with the environment in the places that you marked are better than the one or the relationship that people where we live have with the environment? I mean, that's my perception. That's partly, that's probably just partly my own opinion filtering into it. I would not do anything not, you know, to to damage the environment. I wouldn't be out to do that particularly, but I also am not a particularly environmentally conscious person to where like I would not lose sleep if I accidentally put a can in the trash can but I mean that's maybe that's terrible to say and some people would think that's the most awful thing ever but um it's just not a cause that's like the the forefront of my mind in every decision that I personally make gotcha that's fine that's perfectly Mm -hmm. fine we're just looking for your opinion (laughs) so now that we've looked at the map of the U.S. we're going to Get a little more close and personal with the state of Georgia. So um, we're going to do the same thing on this one. And so you're just going to be marking the communities in Georgia that you think um, where people have the most rooftop solar on their homes. I'm going to say like, and I, I, being, not being from Georgia, I don't like have a, a huge understanding of every socioeconomic kind of group that lives in here. I know there's some more college areas or some more um, very old, like Savannah, for example, that's going to be this whole area. I am perceiving that to be probably a lot of older homes, things that are, um, it's not necessarily a new and up and coming and the newest technologies kind of going on in there in the, in the homes that exist there. So my perception would be that's an older area would be less likely to have it. If you look like in the Atlanta area, Roswell, kind of some of these other areas, of course, Roswell is very old as well. But I also see that there's probably more money in these areas. And I know that Cobb is is currently, um, there aren't enough houses right now in Cobb for if you're in the real estate business or whatever, that there's a shortage of, of homes right now. And um, they were building at the rate that they were, selling and building and everything was kind of fine for a while and then apparently a lot of the builders kind of lost um, a lot of their their financing kind of fell out from under them and so they were all kind of at a standstill for a while and now they're back building again but in that time frame there was there was a greater growth in the population coming to Cobb than there was home building Mm -hmm. so 
I would think now that they're re, you know, they're re-upping all that, and you can see everywhere all around here, there's more and more and more houses being built that they would be likely to be using things like solar power more so than houses that were built 10 or 15 years ago. So I would think there's a lot of growth in this area. So there'd probably be more likelihood for things like that to be happening here than areas of less growth with older communities with older homes. Gotcha. That's really interesting. I did not, I didn't know that. And Mm -hmm. uh, you taught me something today. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So which areas then would you consider have less growth than like, is it just where you pointed out in Savannah, or are you referring to I'm just, all of I'm, these? I'm southern... not knowing. I, I I do know. I do know as a fact that there's a, a housing shortage in Cobb, and that Cobb is growing quite a bit. Like, and will continue to grow in the next twenty years here. And like, our homes will be worth more because people are wanting to live in this area because it's a good commuting distance to get into Atlanta, but yet it's still a, a family type community. What was the question? <laughs> Oh, I was just saying, um, around the area that you chose, like Savannah, Mm -hmm. you said there was not very much growth there. Were you referring to just this part of the coast with Savannah, Um, or do you mean this is totally my impression? I do know this as as more of a fact based thing. I know more about Cobb County only because I live here, so I'm more aware because I'm always looking at like property values Mm -hmm. and what's going on with the properties here and what your property worth versus what you paid for it and all that kind of thing. So I don't have any actual knowledge of this whole area here. But my impression of Savannah is it's an older, um, so, uh, you know, like the Savannah that you go to on vacation, quote mm-hmm. unquote. That's the Savannah I'm picturing is older homes and not like a lot of corporate growth going on around there where they've got corporate offices going up here and there and they, they employ 15,000 people here at this corner and on this one across the street. That's the headquarters for this this one, I see that more being here, and that's the kind of people I see building new homes and putting new technology in their homes. Gotcha. Now, I could be totally wrong, but I don't think that these other areas are, that's not their focus, is that type of corporate growth, you know, mm-hmm. and um, suburbs for families that work in those environments. And that's that's the people that I would think be would be currently putting those types of things in their home. Okay. Mm-hmm. You should write that old-fashioned or however you want to, <laughs> to phrase it. Okay, so this would be more um, vintage, less corporate, more growth, progressive thinkers. Um, the only thing I haven't asked you is about um, your friends and family and whoever you know within the state. Um, do they have solar on their roof? No one that I know of in the area. But that being said, because I'm not from here, mm-hmm. my friends and family and coworkers and everybody, they're pretty much all in the same. I, I've met them because I'm living in this neighborhood, in this environment, in these types of jobs. So we're all very probably similar, same boat. These aren't people that I went to high school with and one went one direction and one's a corporate person and one is, you know, an artist and one is whatever. It's just people that are kind of all in my same boat. So mm-hmm. therefore I'm probably, I'm, I'm living in a neighborhood full of people that are similar to me, probably socioeconomically speaking and also have the houses that are all cookie cutter out at the same time by the same builders here. So that's my core group of people right here. So I'm probably not as diverse in people that I know that might have different types of houses Mm -hmm. because this is who I know. Yeah. Since you pretty much labeled on the map, which is also what I would have thought, like Cobb County is basically what you circled for, uh, the growth and everything. But have you noticed here, what, is there more solar have you noticed more solar here than, let's say, where you lived before? I'm going to say it's, I know, not that I've really necessarily noticed it, because it's not something on my radar that I'm always looking for, but it would be my guess that there's a lot more here than there was where we were before. Because, again, where we were before was not necessarily people building new homes as much as it is here and what I see in this area. And if, if anybody did have solar power back where I lived before, it would have been kind of the old school solar power stuff that's like, oh, that was a solar thing that doesn't work anymore, <laughs> you know, because it's something that came around in the 80s or 90s and then it's kind of defunct and not, you know, they're not utilizing it like they used to because they'd have to redo it all at this point or whatever. So, Okay. 
And now more of a uh, general question about people that you may, may know around the state and stuff. Why do you think those people do or do not have solar on their roofs? Again, the people that I know probably, my core group of people are living kind of in this area in homes that were built about the same time that this home was built. And that was not a particular focus of the neighborhood builders that are kind of in this area at that time, apparently, because I don't know of anybody that in this neighborhood that has it. I could, I could be wrong, but I think the general builders that were building up all these neighborhoods around here weren't particularly focused on that. Gotcha. So to my knowledge, do you think, um, since it's just like not in plain sight, then like people aren't adopting it because they don't see it around. They're like, Oh, we don't think, well, like they don't think about it because it's probably, not okay. it's, there's not a lot of, um, things kind of have to be in your face sort of to catch your attention now because there's just, people are busy and there's so much going on with every single, everything that if it's not very present in your eyesight, whenever you're, you know, making a decision on your house, I don't think it would be on your radar unless you're somebody who's just particularly looking for that because you care about that topic specifically. Gotcha.